So let's get you up to date on what has happened in the crypto market over the last 24 hours because we have had a lot of big news come out. First thing is going to be with Bitcoin and technical indicators. When we're looking at Bitcoin's price, we're seeing a couple of important things happen. First is that Bitcoin broke above the 50-day moving average, which is a very bullish sign. And we also broke above $40,000 per coin. Both of these has act, have acted as very strong resistances, and that is all very bullish. The one thing we need to keep an eye out for, strictly in terms of technical indicators, indicators is going to be with that $46,000 per coin range. What we're seeing is that that has acted as a very key resistance. Over the last 12 to 18 months, in order for us to go all in on crypto, be extremely bullish and not be worried about downside, we're going to have to see Bitcoin's price break above that level. And that is really, in my opinion, going to confirm the reversal and everything happening in the market. Because right now, there is a lot of volatility and we very well could see a 10% drop or gain any given day, depending on what is going on with Russia and Ukraine. But let's talk about other good news because a lot has happened in the market. First thing is going to be with um, the EU. The EU has officially removed the Bitcoin ban from the latest version of crypto legislation. I talk about this on Twitter, so if you don't follow me there, make sure to do so because I post updates on Twitter before I ever talk about them on YouTube, so best way to stay up to date. But what we're seeing right now is that lawmakers have removed the Bitcoin ban from the latest version of crypto regulation. And this is important because the European Union originally had um, language in legislation that was going to bar proof of work tokens um, from the EU. And this is very important because this essentially was going to ban Bitcoin because Bitcoin is proof of work. But what we're seeing now is that what they took this language out in their most recent update to the bill. And this essentially is going to enable Bitcoin to be used and not bear any proof of work token. And this is a huge deal. I want to quickly interrupt today's video to bring you a word from our brand new channel partner, Santa Floki Rush. It's an exciting brand new play to earn game with 100 levels. The development team has been working for months to build the game and it's finally ready to be launched and released to the public. The point of the game is very simple. It's very easy to use. The players try to clear levels, kill bosses, make as much BUSD as possible, and there are 100 levels split into four different worlds, so 25 levels per world. Each world you complete, you win $350, so if you complete all four worlds, you win $1,400. Not only this, but as more people play the game, the bigger your bags get of Santa Floki. So there are a lot of ways to earn with this game. There's no catch. You just go, you play the game, and you earn BUSD rewards. If you like crypto, well, I think it's definitely a no-brainer that you will love this gameplay. It really, in my opinion, is unlike any game I've seen in the play-to-earn space. It's very simple, very easy to use, and it's very easy to make money. I personally have played it a couple of times already. I've already started to generate rewards, and I think it's definitely worth checking out so use the link in the description check out santa floki rush today and also check out their telegram down below for all these new updates exciting new things with their gameplay so check it out and let's get back to the program one reason why i think this is happening is because of everything going on in russia and ukraine we've seen millions of dollars donated in bitcoin over the last to a couple of like 24, 48 hours, we've seen millions of dollars in Bitcoin. And by the EU banning Bitcoin, well, then countries like Ukraine and other like and countries in the EU would not be able to receive donations like Ukraine has been doing. So I think that is one of the main reasons because lawmakers are seeing the benefit of Bitcoin in that sense. Let's talk about um, Russia and Ukraine, though, because Russia and Ukraine, a lot has happened, and Bitcoin has played a big role for both countries. Right now, Russia, we are seeing that the number of Bitcoin whale addresses have spiked since the sanctions on Russia have been implemented. And this is important because we have seen the number of wallet addresses um, that hold 1,000 Bitcoin or more increase over 5% in a single day to over 2,200 Bitcoin whale accounts. This may not be only because of you know the sanctions in Russia, but seeing that big of a jump in a single day, uh, combined with the fact that the ruble is falling significantly in value, combined with the fact that we're seeing Bitcoin volume for Bitcoin to rubles increase dramatically, reach record highs, all of this is a sign that people in Russia are buying Bitcoin. And you can confirm it with on-chain analysis, it's not a rumor, and this shows us the power of Bitcoin and crypto and how when people in Russia are losing 50% of their money simply by holding 
their own currency by holding the ruble, well, what are they going to do? Most likely thing that's going to happen is they're going to move their money to some other currency and the easiest, most efficient currency right now in terms of, you know, getting your rubles over to another currency is going to be with Bitcoin, with crypto. And that is exactly what we're seeing happen. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about Ukraine, the other side to this, because while Bitcoin has been benefiting Russia since they were banned from SWIFT um, and the International Global Payment Network, we're seeing that Russia is also benefiting because Russia has been accepting Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, and now recently they added Polkadot donations as well. And this has been a very exciting deal. We've seen that Ukraine has recently got a donation of $5.8 million in Polkadot once they put out their Polkadot wallet address on Twitter um, from one, from the founder of Polkadot, Gavin Wood. But also they've raised a total of $30 million so far, just over $30 million from simply putting their Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDT, and Polkadot wallet addresses on their Twitter page. This is something that we would not have seen just a couple of years ago. And again, this is very bullish for crypto because we're seeing the power of crypto, how much money and how easy and efficient crypto is compared to um, currencies all around the world. So I think this is the first step of many. This is a key turning point in the history of crypto that countries are turning towards it during times of you know economic turmoil, during times of war. They're turning to crypto rather than, let's say, the US dollar, rather than to another currency, they're turning to crypto. Last couple of things I want to talk about is going to be with tech world and what we're seeing with crypto in the tech world mass adoption. One thing is going to be with eBay because eBay said that as soon as March 10th, they could be announcing crypto payments and people are going to be able to use Bitcoin, Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies on eBay. This isn't a done deal just yet. They said on March 10th, they're going to come out, come out with their announcement and we could see it as early as March 10th. But that is when we're going to definitely know what eBay's plans are moving forward with cryptocurrency and NFTs and how they plan to use it. At this point, it's guaranteed that they're going to have some sort of crypto integration with their business. But we don't know to the extent just yet which cryptocurrencies, when it's going to be released. But March 10th is going to be a key date there. And last thing is going to be with one of the big four accounting firms. Traditional finance space, we saw them. Um, KPMG Canada paid 20 five Ethereum, around $80,000 for NFT project World of Women. They purchased NFT, they purchased World of Women number 2681. And this is a very big deal. Seeing traditional accounting companies, traditional financial companies getting into the crypto space. This shows us that NFTs, crypto are here to stay. Accounting firms, big financial firms are going more heavily into crypto than we've ever seen before. So if you're worried about the state of crypto right now, I would say don't be. Short term, yes, expect volatility with everything going on in Russia and Ukraine. Long term, nothing to worry about. We could easily see 2022 be one of the biggest years for crypto yet, really accelerated by what is going on with Russia and Ukraine, because I think these events in Russia and Ukraine are showing people how important crypto is. So regardless of what you believe about crypto short term, I think you got to take this into account. Russia and Ukraine has shown everyone across the world how important, how valuable crypto is and how really every single person should own something um, in the crypto space. So make sure if you don't already follow me on Twitter. I post updates there all the time about what's going on in the market. Um, I usually talk on Twitter more than I do on YouTube. So make sure to follow me there. But I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys in the next episode. See ya.